Peace. Welcome to the Light Bar Blessings Podcast, where we build with professional leaders who share their organic life lessons. I'm your host, T.O. Clay. My mission is to leverage and extract intellectual perspective, thought-provoking conversation, and real Light Bar moment experiences to help others reflect, develop, and grow as people. These lessons are inspired by the priceless moments in life we use to connect the dots and propel ourselves forward along our journey. It's time to turn on the lamp and shine light. Perfect time, perfect time, gentlemen, to segue. Steel clay light bulb lessons. Peace, love, and light out there. Absolutely. We always say, man, you already know you can fill in the blank. We want to bring in the best leaders possible. These gentlemen are talking about eat it. If, if, if you didn't write that down out there, eat up, explain, demonstrate, imitate, and practice. We're talking about that with our children. So, again, co-host Robbie Lytle in the house of Lytle Leadership. I got my man Dave Bowman, man. I just want to open up by saying something extraordinary happened today. Two of our brothers haven't spoken quite some time. And through these light bulb lessons, they were able to speak today. And that, that can't go without saying. That's huge. And that's what we are. We're brothers. Sometimes, hey, we have disagreements. Sometimes we don't, we don't agree with things that each other may agree with on specific other topics and different things. But that love is real. And, and when I spoke to Brother Ross Blaine, and I told him, man, I, I spoke to Dave. Me and Dave, Robbie Leiter, we're going to hop on and we're going to build about leadership life. First words out of his mouth, he said, man, I want to be on there. I won't be able to be on long, but I miss my brother. I love my brother Dave. Dave knows I love him. And he said, man, no no better time than to take that opportunity to pop in and, and, and speak to my brother. He said, because that man was there for me, and I was there for him. We've been to Mexico together, Clay, with just our spouses, and when he was going through some extreme serious health issues. I was there and vice versa, Clay. He said, man, many other people, nah, I wouldn't be having this conversation. He said, but Dave Bowman, he said, man, I love that man. So again, for that to be able to break bread today, uh, it, it, that's it. That's the light bulb lesson. Two brothers so, came together. How, how long has it been, Dave, since you all spoke? Um, easily. Three, three and some change since we spoke. And we were speaking daily. We were speaking Every daily. Day. That's what yeah. he told me. That's what he told me, man. So I'm I'm grateful for that, man. Yeah, thanks um, for doing it, man. I appreciate yeah, it. That, that, that means so much, man. And I was able to hear Ross's vulnerability. He was very vulnerable in that moment, man. He got emotional. And I told him, I said, bro, like, I said, I know Dave Bowman from the pool. And I said, man, that guy, <laughs> hey, 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 get over it, Nick. Hey, go get them boo bats get them over here right now. Ah, drill instructor, that was it. I said, but watching him, watching his style, watching how he moved, uh, he, he, he's a great. We we talk about the Hall of Fame jacket type thing, Dave. And uh, that brother that's sitting next to you right now, Mr. Robert yeah. Lytle, yeah. hey, that's a special dude right there, man. <laughs> I so love it. For, for anybody out there listening, man, um, again, man, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed as I can look at two brothers that I looked up to, two brothers that I tried my best to carry that legacy on. And when nobody was watching, it's these two brothers, Ross Blaine, many others that, that I was thinking about in the back of my mind that set that true standard. I made a little post the other day. The standard is the standard. Yeah. Say less. That's, that's just what it is. So... <laughs> With that being said, A, again, thank you for checking out Light Bulb Lessons. Also in the house with Vital Leadership. Hey, we're, we're, we're dual hatting it. We're making it happen. And again, man, it's organic. Uh, we, don't, we don't have a, you know, script, anything. We just love for, for individuals to learn, to be able to develop, to take and impart something from us, you know, through our experience and leadership that could help your life. In, in the situations that you're dealing with. So without further ado, fellas, matter of fact, Dave, how you feeling today, brother? And I'm 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 good, man. I can't I actually have, I'm a little overwhelmed with emotions too, having 
seeing your faces. It's been years, man. I know I've seen yeah. Rob just over a year ago, and I haven't spoke to Ross, but Clay, man, I haven't seen you in... It's been a long time. Well, I, let's say 2004? About five? 2004. About 04. Right. 04, 04 and that's the last time we had seen each other before we saw each other right. again. Right. Sure. right. And um, the leader, so we are in leadership camp. Two, two decades. Events. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute. I know this guy. Right. So it was, uh, and, you know, and for uh, for teenagers to see that reconnection, yeah, you know, that was that that was a moment, and I I think those that um, that that grow together, you know, it you we suffered together. So it this growing this vessel that we've all traveled in, we might have got off in different ports, mm-hmm. but we're still we still got that ticket, you know, Sick, very bro. similar. And we've all been ingratiated in a lot of the same stuff, yeah, bro. you know? So, and I think, and even though there, there are many more who are like us, uh, they're not like us, mm. you know, they got on the boat. They just didn't conform to the standards that got off quickly. Right. Right. Not that they were bad. It's just that they weren't the same, you know? And so, I think, you know, I appreciate your comments about, you know, things that you see from afar, leaders you see from afar or or people you see from afar doing things that you say, wow, I like that. I'm going to put that tool in my tool bag and I'm going to use that later when I have the time. Right. I think that's important. You know, we were talking about kids. Adults need the <laughs> same focus. They need the same idols. They need the same images of what right looks like. Doesn't need to be perfect. Perfection it doesn't I get exist. Direct yeah. messages all the time around that. Like I get like from adults, grown men. I just sent Clay one from my old one of my old uh, recruits from back in when we were uh hats right. back in the early two thousands. You know, just as thank you real quick. And I jumped on the phone with him. When I'm saying that I say all that to say this, you never we never know what uh relationship we're forging. And some of those same ones that was kids that we were training and mentoring, the same like we're doing now, like just now, one of mine just passed right now. No, you guys know Gary Smith? Remember Sergeant yeah. Smith? Yes, yeah. yeah. So he put out a he put out a mess. Yeah, he put us he put a message out today uh, about reaction versus response, and I thought it was spot on. But the one thing I caveated was you could have a positive reaction to something, and you don't need to think about it. Your emotions mm-hmm. can be. You can be responsive right away and it can be positive and that's okay. But his point was to take a moment when somebody says or does something to you that instead of being, you know, reactive, think about it, take, take time, pause. And then, you know, so you can be logical in your response and all that stuff. And he talked about that. So I, I like messages like that because it, it just, I too, I think everybody has the right to be uh, emotional. We're all emotional. We're humans, right? It's when you're irrational, it's when it becomes unattractive or unresponsive or, you know, like when somebody is completely irrational in their thoughts because their emotions are taken over. That's bad. I, this, is where, this is where I focus my life and energy on. I told my daughter the other day, as an example, I said, hey, I know she came across some some girls that she's like, what if I don't want to be friends with somebody? What do I do? So you don't have to be friends with anybody. Just remember this. I facilitate relationships. My goal in life is to constantly build bridges. I might need to cross it or I might need a friend or a coworker to cross that bridge. And if I'm constantly burning these bridges, I'm losing opportunities to be productive in society. Right. I might not like what's on the other side of the bridge, but I might need to cross it at some point. How what? So that being said, take everything in stride. Right. You don't need to be her friend, but don't shunt her out of your life. Don't be like, mm, you know, like you're not allowed to be in my group. Wait a minute. If they're coming to you trying to be in your group, then you must be the leader. Yes. And if you're telling people to go away, that's that's not good. Have them sit down, introduce them to your friends, even though you might not like their character at that moment. It might develop into somebody positive and you'll like them. But if you burn the bridge as a child, 
when you become a teenager or an adult, they're going to look back and say, nah, I remember you were nasty to me. Right. And now they don't like you, but you need them now, mm -hmm. right? So facilitate relationships by building bridges. Don't be reactive. Be responsive and rational. If you don't know what you're talking about, go read a book. Because mm -hmm. not everything is going to be gained from experience. Right. You know, we've all got enough knowledge in our heads, but until I experience it, it's really difficult for me to explain Right. I might not, I might understand what you're saying because I read it in a book, but that doesn't mean I can explain it because I haven't experienced it. So until you experience it, read a book because it's going to help guide you in life. It's not going to give you all the answers. It's going to help guide you. So build bridges, facilitate relationships, keep all doors open because one day you might need to go through it. You know what I mean? That's the leadership in my heart. Peace, love, and light. My name is T.O. Clay of Light Bulb Lessons. I'm a leadership coach dedicated to helping you as a leader thrive in the places and things that matter the most. Your internal light, your self-improvement, and your leadership effectiveness on others. With years of experience in various leadership roles, I completely get it and understand the real challenges that come with managing what most leaders face and struggle with, and that's the work-life balance. I truly love to lead, I'm being honest with you. And because of that, I wanna help guide and empower you as a leader on your journey towards a successful career and fulfilled life. Through personalized coaching and mentorship, I will help you develop strong leadership skills specific to you. I will help you optimize your strength of communication and help you navigate through your work-life balance with confidence and reality. If you are a true leader, a real leader looking to improve, further advance, and unleash your full potential, I invite you to contact me today. Together, hey, let's take a look at whether it's a good fit to work together. Remember, your experience, skills, and willingness to improve are valuable assets that can make a significant impact in your profession and career, as well as your community. Contact me now, and let's take that leadership to the very next level. Peace. Look yeah. like I'm sure you can't see what it, gentlemen, with, with the blur yeah. or whatever, but yeah. the the Headway app. If you're not up on the Headway app, H-E-A-D-W-A-Y, uh, they're not paying us. There's no affiliation or anything no. like that. But, man, it, 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 it basically summarizes all these books. It, you know, James Clear, Simon Sinek, you know, uh, Robert Lytle, Tim Clay, Dave Bowman. Yeah, I see you speaking in the existence. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, it it is dope, man. And 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 I'm spending more time, gentlemen, uh, on this with little ladder. Time. This one. Yes, yes, that's it with the ladder. I'm spending more time on that, gentlemen, than scrolling Instagram. Yeah. Because it because like you said, Dave, I'm I'm putting something back, bro, and it summarizes yeah. it. Usually yeah. about about five or six pages. Uh, it's dope, man. I love it, man. So you spot on, man. But you know, young people like to read. You know, both of yeah. you have worked, you know, in that capacity at the high schools. What do you, what what have you all seen in terms of like, you know, I want to go to the military or I do not want to go to the military. What what's that vibe been like for either one of you? Well, to, uh, it's a quick statistic: only about three percent of ROTCs nationwide. Uh, go in the military. Uh, and I'm just speaking from an ROTC classroom, not Marine Corps, not Army specific, just in general. Just in so I don't general. know, whatever that breaks down per, per service, it, it is what it is. I don't know that exact statistic. But what I have seen is most of the kids that come to ROTC are confused about it until they get there. A fraction mm. of those kids, I'll talk to a few recruiters as they go, and this is only my second year doing the program, but I was in ROTC in high school, if that says anything, you know. Uh, but, Asheville. Shout out to Ashville. Um, 70% of our students, you know, give or take a few uh, percentage points, aren't even capable of of serving uh, our right. our country right. in that capacity. In that capacity. So let me let me let me or let me expound on that. Um, if 70% of our society is not even physically capable of depping into the pro into the military to even try. Right. Then we got to focus on the 30%. Right. 
Okay. So for whatever reason, health reasons, out of you know, conditioning, whatever the case may be, they're not allowed to, or they can't. They're they're deemed um, incapable of even trying. That's that's that saddens me more than anything. Not their lack of patriotism or wanting to do that. That yes. I was in JROTC in high school too, and very few of us joined the, the military, let alone the Marine Corps. So I, I don't focus on that too much. However. Right. Health. Let's talk about health. I'm alive today because of my health, because mm. of the dedication I served on making sure I stayed healthy. Right. You know, I've been fighting cancer since I was a gunny. That's been eight, 18 years almost. Wow. So my you you guys didn't know that. I, I left the depot and was diagnosed with um, melanoma. So you found out on the depot. Right as I left the depot. Wow. And uh, wow. so I went to I went to OCS. That's right. I remember, you, that's right. I remember I that. straight to OCS, graduated top of my class. Didn't let any of this bother me. Right? Come back. Now they don't even know if I'm gonna be able to become a officer. Go to college, finish out my degree at the University of South Carolina. Shout out to the Gamecocks. And uh, you know, I'll go finish my degree. I then try to go to TBS, the basic school, to be a lieutenant. And they were like, mm, I had to go through many channels. Had I not been healthy and had I not showed no evidence of disease at that time, I, I probably wouldn't be in this position I am today. And um, I go seven years later and it comes back. Mm. Uh, they all they at the time, there's not really a treatment, there's some clinical trials. I, I, I don't take any of the clinical trials because they're able to remove all my cancer and they show me no evidence of disease. Eight years later, it shows up in my brain. And I'm in the Philippines. I get extracted out of the Philippines. That's why I end up retiring. Now, you know, it was time anyways. I was okay. Physically, I've broken down. You know, we're all broken. So right. I don't even say that. Everybody, they say everyone deploys. I, I take that away. Not everybody deploys, but everybody is pretty much broken. Everybody's if you, broke. if you yes. put forth any effort, you're broken. Yeah. Um, Feeling it. But, but because of my health, because I consistently focused on making sure I didn't overeat, I didn't overindulge, I, I exercise regularly, you know, and this is not everybody. Obviously, I, I, will, I will absorb the fact that maybe I'm an anomaly. But I venture to say, if you keep yourself healthy, when it comes time to fighting other things, you're going to be you're going to be better off. I'm not saying the absolute because not everybody is in the same boat. You're going to be better off than the next person who doesn't. So right, when I right. when I go back to the kids who who want to join the service, I want them to join for the reasons they want to join for, not because me, not because of you, but because. This is what they need to build a great foundation. I think all of us can say where we've come from, what we've done, it made us who we are today. Yeah, so man. I'm proud of that, right? Yeah, man. But I, I want every person in the country to say, in order for me to make my community better, I need to serve my community. Instead right. of Ooh. complaining about everything, instead of saying it's somebody else's fault, I need to look in the mirror and say, what did I do to better my community? Right. Am I volunteering? Am I, am I educating? Am I a nurse? Am I a doctor? Am I a firefighter? No, so, I'm just out there hunting down money, you mm -hmm. know, so that I could be whatever. I keep a lot of those thoughts out of my head because I don't want to be right. negative. But when right. you think of that in that light, like, where are we going if you're not focused on making your community better and making sure that you're looking at helping others before you help yourself? Mm. And I think that's very inspirational. You know, look at your hat says inspire others. Right, right. If you're not Thank doing you. that, then you're part of the problem. You're not, you're not, you're not doing anything but being irrational and emotional. Indeed. All you're doing is you and hate. You're not fixing it, you're not helping fix. I don't think everything is broken, but I do. Some, I do believe some things can be remolded. That Absolutely. child, like I was talking about earlier, who wasn't molded properly, I think everybody can be remolded to look at life 
differently. That's just my take. So I didn't have a lot of kids who wanted to join the military, though their opinion of the military changed after, you know, um, my MI and myself um, got there and we started up a new program and they started seeing other things. Now they maybe it's another venue for them, but it became another option, right? It became another yeah. door, became another bridge for them to eventually cross, right? Something that's all it was, you know? And so that's that's how I look at it. So I think it's I think it's reflective about the same time frame as when we were children or high school students. Um, and really that if more than one percent of society joined the service, we'd have a butt ton of people, you know. Right. That, It'd be it'd like probably, it'd be hard. <laughs> it probably wouldn't be a quality as, as we like either, to be honest. Because yeah. we have some good stipulations and some regulations in place for reasons, mm -hmm. right? But I I think people can be mm -hmm. be molded. You can you can develop people. Not everybody's born with the gift of gap. Not everybody has the ability to lead, inspire others. It's not it's not natural for everybody. All right. So if it's so if it's not in your if it's not in your genetic makeup, then inspire somebody. Yeah. We set goals that are way outside of our our will. I don't know, man. I, I'm motivated motivated about this stuff. I get get pumped about the man, idea of like holding a kid to be a great better I than me. It. I love better it. than you. You know, no, we, we we did it at the highest level, man. Yeah, like, I know. We did it, gentlemen. We did it at the highest level. We yeah. we had tools. We had some good tools, but think about think about man that that last day, sea bags land in the squad base, yeah. and they come back in there, man. Just that feeling, you know. Mm -hmm. it, no matter what we went through throughout that cycle, man, that moment was worth it, bro. Well, you know, seeing that um, parent, that 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 dad hugging the kid, or the mom crying, saying you changed them. They 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 never spoke wow. like this before. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's you, you don't, yeah. You don't have to cure cancer, man, but you need to contribute to figuring out. You don't have to cure sickle cell. You don't have to cure any. You know, you don't have to cure anything. You don't have to. You don't have to be that one. But you got to be able to look in the mirror and say, "What am I doing?" Yeah. You know, what and if I'm I not do? doing any, yeah, what am I doing? That's it. Pick pick yourself up by your bootstraps. You talk about it all the time. It's not just a saying. I think it. I think it holds true. Pick yourself up and go do something. Yeah, man. Well, if you're not inspiring somebody, go find inspiration somewhere. Yeah, man. But but get out of your own way. You're your own worst obstacle. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it is, and, it, and it's and it's easy for me to say that now because I've had to do it. I was depressed. You know, like the, it does get where you're like, man, I'm being chased by this thing I can't avoid. I'm trying every day to be a better me, better me than I was yesterday. And yet I'm still being hounded by scans every month, scans every three months. I'm constantly hmm. being, you know, reminded that something's trying to take me down. But I'm here to tell you, gentlemen. No, no, it can't happen. It won't happen. You know, that's, that's that's what it needs to be. It's like everybody has something they need to overcome, and that's okay. It is. Yes. But yes. ain't nobody gonna be there to help you get over it. That's nobody. Right. I realize that at a young age allows me to be accountable. Yeah. Fellas, what do you say to the Marine soldier, airman? sailor that's retiring in the next 30 days what are some things that they can do to ensure that they continue to move forward can y'all build on and elaborate on that well, we can go everywhere with that you can go ahead dave oh. go ahead all right yeah, i'll go i'll moment. go there i'll go there here let me tell you something take Ooh. time to yourself because you'll never get it back Come on, bro. you'll never get Let's it back. Go. You can't buy time. You can't read about it. You can't. You can't pray upon it. There, there's nothing that's gonna that's gonna give it back to you. Nothing. Uh -huh, so take baby. time for yourself. Re-identify yourself. Mm, Put bro. yourself. Oh, remove yourself from those years of service. And God bless you for doing what you did. We appreciate you, man. It, it'll all. But don't look for a pat on the back. Boom. Re. Characterize yourself, take some time, 
prey on it. Stop looking for the money to, to supplement. I get that everybody's got different situations. I understand that. Trust me. We all do. And I sit from a position that's different than others. Okay. But it took me a moment. I, I got a job. I reflected on what I was doing. I was inspiring others. I loved it. But I took a moment before I did that. Mm. And when I realized this wasn't what I what I was meant to do, I took another moment. And I spent time with my kids. I started coaching the, my girls' soccer team. I tried to be a coach and assistant coach to my other daughter's volleyball team. I spent time with my family. I made them priority one because you can't get time back from that, man. Oh, I don't care yeah. how much money you got. You can't buy right. it. There's no vouchers. Buy. There's no vouchers. There's no electronic trans funds transfers on time. There's you nobody to sit there and say, you can borrow my time. No, nothing. So that's what I would say. Congratulations. You've done what you needed to do. We are appreciate we appreciate what you've done. Everybody has. You'll get a letter. You'll get tons of them. Matter of fact, I don't think I even read all of my letters. You know, right. that's the type of letters you're going to get for right. all the appreciation. They're going, to, but time to take a moment mm. and 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 re characterize. I mean, re identify yourself. Fall, fall in love with the new you. Yeah, you know, bro. You know what it took me to do this? <laughs> I struggled. <laughs> struggled. That's right. Like, for me to cut my hair, I don't know how many times because I was, was like, "Can't do for fifteen years." Yeah, you look good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you know what? You're right. Taking that break, I took a year off, and I'm not saying everybody can do that. But I took a year before I even built Lido Leadership to think about it, to plan it. Before I took the RTC gig, which I really keep separate from my business because you know I don't want to, things to get misconstrued because I say a lot of right. stuff, and right. I don't want that to come into the classroom. You know what I mean? I say right, 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 right. But I do. I would build off that with you, Dave. Like you're right. Take the time and also get a mentor. You got to mm. have somebody that's wow. been there for a little while that you can wow. talk to, you can decompress with. You know, they've gone through some of those things that, that you're going to go through. And maybe not just one, three, four, five, six. You know, there's plenty right. of us that we serve with people that have already gotten out. I was fortunate enough that I had Ross Blaine <laughs> as mm -hmm. a mentor uh, yeah. when I was getting out. Andre Smallwood was another one because uh, mm -hmm. we only retired one time. You know what I mean? We only retired one time. It ain't like everybody's got it figured out. So you got to right. ask the Oh, and Andre will be the first one. Don't do like I did to just get out, you know? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. He, and he says that. that so you that's a great, that mentor, yeah, that mentor piece is huge, man. I, I is. guess I think all too often I find myself in that position. I say that with the highest amount of humility possible, though a humble person never says he's humble. I will sit there and tell you that I sometimes need to find my own, you know, I, I need to sit down and, and, and say, hey, Go and I have oddly enough, my mentor is not even a Marine. He's in the Air Force. He was an Air Force Colonel. And I've taken a lot of his knowledge and leadership. One of the best leaders I ever came across was not a Marine. And that's mm -hmm. not a problem. That's not a problem. Oh, great no. dude. Great not dude. Great brother, great brother from Alaska. And, you know, A10 pilot, just excellent, excellent man. But the mentor piece. That's huge, man. I appreciate that, Robbie. So like even today, I'm learning. I appreciate it. Oh, I wanted to do a shout out, man. I forgot a little plug. Uh, did Ross tell you that he and I actually went to boot camp together? He did. He did. All right, cool. He All right, did. Sure. He did. That's how long we've been together, he man. We actually he did. I, yeah. See, everybody I went to boot camp with got out, man, that I know of. You know, and I oh, and yeah. I served with a few years. You know, Sam Roach, Steve Wick, shout out to those guys, but they all bounced. Right after boot camp. And this stuff for everybody. It's okay. No, nah, it's not. Um, no, it's I, not. I, I plan on doing four. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I, my, I, I think we all did. I think we like all did. A four, and then I then I got around some brothers and I looked to my left and right and I'll say, like, man, I ain't going back. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Because leadership allowed me to I didn't know. Did we learn this? I learned the term leadership in RTC. You know what I mean? My dad never really used it around the house. You know what I mean? He he used coaching. He used uh, teaching. He used the belt. You know what I mean? So so he, <laughs> right. it's a form. It's a form of leadership. <laughs> Corporal punishment. Yes, and yeah. that made me great. Uh, to me, it, it built me. You know, and it, it, and I parent my kids somewhat the same way, but leadership to me, outside of the instant willing and the orders and respect for authority, 
and self-reliance and all the discipline. It's, it's really just taking a group of people or an individual and helping them reach their full potential while you're reaching yours. You know, right. you're reaching your own full potential while you're helping somebody else. Because anybody yeah. can climb up to the top and look down, man. The hard part is to keep reaching back down and pulling yeah. somebody up and pushing them up above you. You know what that's I mean? Right. That's what the standing on the shoulders of giants means, man. Hey, and that's how hey, I feel. I owe it to them. The Fenner. Hey, Clay. Exactly. Hey, Clay, what's what's your take on it, man? I mean, you gotta, you guys, you guys did this together. You guys been running and gunning, you and your bride. You've been, you know. You guys mm. are in the same mindset to obviously to varying degrees, but basically right. running parallel ops. Right. What, what's your take on that? Like, what what do you think? Oh, man. If I could throw that back at you. No, nah, no. Nah, great, man. You know, I, I'm in all right now. Yeah. You know, the, the biggest my biggest takeaway was being present in the moment. Yeah. You know, it, somebody had said it the other day. It may have been you, Robbie. I'm not sure, but said that we have the uh, – uh, the marquee in our mind, that that mm -hmm. that marquee of words, just constantly the the red words in our mind, and we can start getting in our own stinking thinking, man. Mm -hmm. You know, and being present in the moment. I'm sitting here right now, like this is amazing, bro. Hearing this level of leadership building together, you two right now. Oh, come on, bro. Like I'm happy. Like I'm I'm just sitting back, like yo, this is it. Because, man, we're hitting on mentorship. We're hitting on, you know, inspiring others, man. How important is that, bro? And and I'll say it, man. Like, if you're not doing nothing, man, get out the way, man. Get out the way. Like Dave said. You stand on the sideline and watch yeah. until you're ready to jump in. Yeah. You don't stand right. in the way. Yeah, get yeah, out yeah. the way, man. It, it, it's too much going on, on out here in society, man, um, to not – feel something within you to want to help other people, man. I just don't understand it. Me and Robbie talk about it all the time, Dave. It ain't about the money for us, man. It's not about the money for you, Dave. You don't need no damn money. <laughs> Come on now. But, but, but you're, you're <laughs> doing it. You're doing it out of the, the goodness of your heart. Yeah. You, you're, you're doing it because it's in your DNA, man. And this right here, gentlemen, it's therapeutic. This this right here, therapy, bro. I don't, this I don't is care. There any counseling. Absolutely. I don't I don't care yeah, how yeah. many clicks and likes. We're not doing it for that. We're, yeah. we're, we're doing it for that one person. Like Robbie said, that one recruit that reaches out and said, man, I, I appreciate you, gentlemen. Just sitting back, listening to the things you're talking about. So, yeah, Dave, it's, uh, you know, Kizzy and I, man, we have our moments, bro. Like, you got two hats in the house. You already know, Dave. How's it going down? <laughs> She, you know, I'm Italian, you know, you know I, I got the fourth Italian burgundy on the day. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> she has shown me love. But, but when it comes to our children, you know, it, it's a balance, Dave. Because because Kizzy's gangster, dog. Like, shout out to Kizzy. I love you, babe. But yeah. she's gangster, dog. Like, yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. That, that mama gangster. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. Where, where being present in the moment, being home. You know, like my son right now, he's upstairs. His older brother just just got off the bus about 10 minutes ago. They know, hey, dad's down there doing therapy. Mm, mm. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't mess yeah. with dad right now because he, he they know how 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 much this means to me. Yeah. Like Dave, when, when you reached out on LinkedIn, bro, you know, again, man, it's it's, it's God, God is moving in ways, man, that it, it's unbelievable. And and I truly do know, Dave, we're, we're, we're doing God's work, bro. We're, we're, we're doing what God is telling us to do, you know. And when I retired, man, I I said, man, what am I going to do? And and like you said, I just took that time, man. You know, Ross told me, hey, sit down, bro. Don't 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 worry about Monday morning. Reintegrate yeah. back into that house, man, with Kizzy. <clears throat> live, live in Kizzy's world for a little bit. You know, because he's been out for a minute. So, yeah. oh, like, man. I, I, would, oh, like, I will tell you that, um, you know, Ross said the same thing to me. And it was hard. It's hard for somebody who is running at 300 miles per hour. I ain't going to say 100. I'm saying 300 to come man. to a full stop. Yeah, man. So wherever, whatever miles per hour you are between 300 and zero, you that's up to you. I don't care. I was at 300. Right. And, I, and I truly believe I was a train wreck 
waiting to occur. So had it not been my medical issue that made me take a pause, I would have been able to reflect on that. Mm. So it was God, That's in real. my opinion, setting me down to say, hey, man, take a pause, dude. You, uh, you, you reckon can't get you to 90, not like this. You're going to be you're going to be gone before you hit 50, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that was, a, that was a calling for me. Uh, and you know, not, I'm not putting Ross's stuff out there either, but you know, we, we come, we hit some roadblocks, mm -hmm. you know, you take a, a humble pause, you, you literally taking a knee mm -hmm. and you say, Whoa, Oh, I can't even, I can't even get to 10 miles per hour, let alone up to 300. That's Cause right. then I'll end up, I'll end up dry, my dry, <laughs> my drive shaft will go right through, you know, like, so yeah, I was forced to do that. So going back to you, your previous question, you said, Hey, what should, what would you tell people who are getting out? Like, Hey, find that reason to stop and take time. Yeah. I was forced. And even then I still had to sit there and say, man, where are my priorities? You know, mm. also Clay, I think what I often tell people who are wanting to know is, don't do me. Do you. Do you. Mm. Yes. Say that one more time, bro. Yeah, one more don't, time. Don't, don't do me. Do you. Mm. And whatever you is, you define it. Don't use my definition of me, David Bauman, to define who you are. Because I'm not a real estate agent. I'm not going to sell you a house. Right. Right? I am who I am by... By, by many factors, you know? And so I, I tell people, or I try to explain to people, if you're trying to get to where I'm at, whatever level in your mind you think that is, I promise you, I could bring you down. That's not where mm -hmm. I'm at. I appreciate you looking at me at that level, mm -hmm. but don't, don't do me, do you? Because do it's you. healthier. It's do mentally you. healthier that way. And... <laughs> Open up the idea that it's okay to have mental health issues, man. Yeah, bro. Please, please yes, remove your uh, remove the stigma, remove the concern. You could still be an alpha male or a male mm. of any 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 spectrum. You could be an alpha female. You could be a a bravo. I don't really know. Don't care. Don't care where you feel you are or where you think other people see you are, but. Open up to the thought, it's okay to ask for help. Yeah, bro. because this right here gets me two, three more years of life. Yeah, bro. you know, just in the mental oh. health perspective, man. No, wow, I, man. That, that's just where I, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at in my life. Oh, that's man. where I've been trying to go. And and I reached out for that reason because sometimes you just need to reach out. And I reached out, man. I ain't spoke right, to everybody. Man. I I went yeah. I went into a deep dark hole, mm. and I opened up. Wow, you know. So that's that's how I look at it, and I appreciate the fact that you guys are who you are, yeah, and man. you know, and I gravitate to like minded people. So Bro. I, man, I I've always known oh, your wife. Man. I've known her when she got the di school. I, I oddly enough, I think I was at the pool when you guys are going through. That's why this whole thing. That's yeah. why all these connected yeah, you, tissues. You were, sla you were slaying recruits at that pool, bro. You were slaying recruits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bro, but man. No, it, oh, this is really. necessary. This it is, is not, man. It this is. is a necessity. This is not something that's a nicety. And there's yeah, a difference man. between the nicety and the necessity. I need this oh. interaction oh. in my life. Oh, man. You, this, you, you, Dave, you said. You said it, man, with real passion, bro. Like, don't be afraid to ask for help, man. Like, dog, like my eyes, you know, just automatic, bro, because I'm thinking about Edward Pages, man. He, yeah. he he just he just took his life a week ago, week and a half ago, two two weeks ago, two two Wednesdays ago. You know what I mean? Uh, Edward Pages, man. Uh, what? I've known that young yeah. little dog since man. the PFC, man. And uh I'm oh, sorry to hear that for his family. Man. Yeah, man. When I when I when I got the news, dog, I all I, I was telling Robbie this. Um <clears throat> dog, that one touched me different, Dave. That one touched me, bro. 
Yeah, dude. Because like, that, just, that just like, gives me hey. more reason. That gives me more reason to be more convicted on the thought that you need yeah, to ask bro. for help. And let me tell you something. If you're listening out there yeah. right now, shame on you if you don't ask for help. That's all I'm yeah. going to say. Watching yeah. George Shine take him take his life, uh, you know, others that I know of, and I'm going to leave their names alone because I know right. that it's their families, but it, like, don't, don't. Yeah, there, there, there's a reason why you're here. Don't be the reason why you leave. Indeed. Let you know, other things. I don't put that on anybody, yeah. too, man. No, it, man. Like, the dude that killed my mom, the, the dude, the, the guy who murdered my mom, took his life right afterwards. And I don't even wish it on him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Right. So many, and, and I respected the dude. I loved him as a stepfather, you know, a father in law, whatever you want to call him. But you said something, man, about that retirement piece and that mental health piece about not trying to be me or try, trying to be him, but be yourself. Mm -hmm. And the, and you said that that kind of ties it together. You know, that says, you know, you said that you thought it was God sending you down. And that's true. I think that's true. The scripture that says, be still and know that I'm God. And in order, you have to slow mm -hmm. down. You have to stop. You, right. yeah, I'm not saying you got to go sit down and do Pilates or meditate or whatever. I, I like meditation, help. but but it does help when you sit down and you. Most people can't sit with themselves for more than five minutes. That's the they truth, gotta man. Those, they got to keep moving. They can sit down. That's that's where the magic happens. Yes. Oh, it's so hard <laughs> because you 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 have to be accountable with your own thoughts when you get it. Like, yeah. oh wait a minute, I can't distract myself. I have right. to focus. And and when you do that. That's who you find out who you are. When you do that, that's who you find out. That's how you find out, you know, what your next moves are. But until you stop and stop trying to be sad, because the Marine Corps ain't there. They ain't no, they ain't, or the Army or wherever you're retiring from, there's no place to go to on Monday. No, if you're sir. retiring on that Friday, nobody's calling, nobody's coming to check, except your boys. You'll see who's there. 10, yeah. 10, yeah. You know, 15, 20 uh, minutes after your, uh, your retirement, the phone will ring a few times, but you know, it's not going to ring like it used to. And so, you have to under you got to find out what your next moves are by being still. That was a great point, man. Just being still and listening. Being still, man. Are you tired of being stuck in your current position at work? Or perhaps you're just upset about not giving your family enough time. Or maybe you would like to be more productive with your time. Either which way, whether at home or at work. The reality is this, though. It doesn't matter if you're a doctor. It doesn't matter if you're an engineer, a manager in one of the departments, or just a college student. If you don't know how to maintain work-life balance, you'll end up being average at work and at home. And will eventually become a slave to your own time. You just got to understand that for what that's worth. To solve that problem that you have, I have collected three are the most effective methods on how to maintain work-life balance so that you become more productive with your time, give your family enough hours and get the best out of your work so that you can level up both at work and at the crib or at home, as I like to say. So, man, check it out. Click the link and get your free PDF right now. And I promise you, you'll be happy that you did. Peace. You're right, Robbie. Being still, bro. Um... You have to, dog, because that's, that's where the real magic happens, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, think about it, dog. Like, even in even in our deepest level of training, our deepest level of planning, OODA loop, whatever it is, dog, you got to be still sometimes, man. E even in that mad dash rush, United States Marine mm -hmm. War, still there's there's that moment. How many times do y'all sit in the office by yourself? Knowing that I'm about to walk out of this door, when I walk out of this door, it's on. Mm -hmm. You know, it's on. How many times you sit in the car by yourself before you got out and walked in that building? I'll stand man. outside the back hatch in the morning. Right, right. Wait for and lights to come on. Yes. Out. And you run you run through the whole day. You, yeah. you can sit there literally in your mind run through the whole day. You know, remember these weren't, when we were down there, they didn't really have these Fitbits and smart watches and all that stuff. When I went oh. back down to Paris Island as a first sergeant, they did in, in 14, hats yeah. were running a marathon every other day. On their, if you if you logged yeah. it in, they they were, they were doing twenty six to thirty two miles, and they weren't doing half the stuff we were doing. You know what I mean? They would be, stuff got closer. You know, yeah. the third battalion was right there. They had a consolidated child hall, so everything oh, yeah. was close. Uh, man, it's 
Then the hats were moving. So when you add in like, and then we had them hours that we had to stop. Like, like we were working 120 hours on, during our times. Finner and them, they didn't care. They weren't clocking us. They, you know, they they wouldn't put a cap on it. You know, depot store and major hats don't. They won't have working more than 65 hours a week and stuff. Now I don't know what's going on down there right now, but they they were putting caps on the hours, rightfully so, because we did go a little bit too far, but we we wanted to. Yeah, that's true. That's different. That's different. Wanting to and having to, you Two can't teach minds. want. You can't teach it. You're you can't right. teach that desire. Wow. You can't teach You're it. right. You, you can't. And that's what that's what's you know when you talk about uh, you know skimming the fat, taking you but know when you talk about going the through difference and, in the yeah. voluntary service in the draft. You see what I mean? Yeah. Like right. you're going to get the output based on what people did. You know, like they like mm -hmm. if I wanted to do something and I come down here and I signed up for it, even if it sucks, I'm more than likely to way, way through the bad times. But if you force me to do something that I don't want to do, even if it's my duty, I'm not going to perform it to the best of my ability just by default. Right. I, yeah. I'll just say, yeah. I also say, ah. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not big on talking about the depot too much because it brings back a lot of, you know, just the smell of CLP brings back memories. But uh, <laughs> the thought that, you know, people used to think they were kicking, it. you know, we call it the kicking, it, you know, I'm yeah, you kicking it. You, yeah. you didn't have to tell somebody you ain't kicking it. They knew. That's a fact. They I knew. knew. They, they knew. They knew. They knew. And they they could they could yeah. look at <clears throat> they could look at themselves and look at somebody else and they knew that if they were kicking or not they could lie to themselves they could even lie to other people about I'm kicking it you ain't kick, you know it's like, whatever but you knew in your heart of hearts when you were kicking it when you weren't kicking it if right. you were the guy that kicked it all the time or you know and we talk about kicking it for those who aren't really uh, aware of what that means that's just basically like you're going full speed you yeah. you got recruits thinking you you know recruits going wild drill instructors crazy like I only know where this guy's at he's everywhere. But nowhere, and I never see him. But I always see him. It's like <laughs> craziness at all times. That's kicking it when recruits have gone crazy because they can't control their own emotions. That's how you know drill instructors are kicking it. And you know, and what your definition of kicking it compared to others? That's you know, some people are like, well, I punch a recruit. In the no, that's not kicking it. That's you lack leadership skills, so you go back to being irrational because you're emotional. You know, it's like oh it's man. You're too emotional. Everybody has emotion, but when you're too emotional, you be you're irrational and you put your hands. It's on unchecked you. emotion. You're right because you're yeah. right because mental health. Like a lot of times we have mental health is because we refuse to deal with our emotions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when I well, not really mental health. I think it's brain health and, and folk. You know, we we overturn mental health. It should be brain function. We're trying to stay healthy mentally, but a lot of everything ain't just a mental health thing. You're just having a bad day. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Anxiety is natural. It's a you know we we tie that with everything, but it comes back to knowing yourself and seeking self improvement. Constantly right. figuring out where I'm deficient and, and how I can improve. And, and, and it, it, you, if you can do that in any endeavor and anything you're pursuing, you should be trying That's to try right. to Yeah. There's a culture for a reason. You're either going to mold into that culture or you're going to mold out of that culture. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's okay. And it's okay. Regardless of what path you take, it's God's path. It ain't your path. It's God's mm. path. You know, I'm not, no. I'm not a very religious person, but man, I got, I got some some thoughts in my mind that keep me correct, man. Right, I'm telling yeah. you, like there is a reason we're all here together, and it's the path of the Lord, man. I, I didn't I didn't go. Let me go find T.O. Clay and and Lido Leadership. And let me no. I, I literally was like, you know what? I need to reach out to these guys because, man, it's this is what keeps me going. You know, it's, yeah, it's God's path, and He directed me in some form or fashion. You know, and you know I. I appreciate the time, gents. This has been great. Yeah, bro. Definitely yeah. great. Appreciate I think we can go about this all day, man. We could podcast this for years and, yes. and really get people, you know, for me, I kind of like I, I focus on the thought that uh, there's a reason I'm still here. Yes. There's a there reason is, why we're all yes. still here. And that's 100%. because I, it's because I still have more to give. And that's, mm, why, oh, I man. And that, and that's why I haven't been taken. So, Ooh, bro, you know that I want to show that you gets me that gets me going. So, man, you know, y'all can't see it, but on this board, I'm going to read it. It says my five move the needle in little areas. Non-negotiables. Number one, 
pray every day. Mm, no, five number, time. number two, read every day. Something positive in parentheses. Mm -hmm. Number three, waste no time. Number four, will not procrastinate. Number five, study about business daily. Uh, great leaders ask for help. Dave said mm -hmm. it. Great leaders ask for help. As if uh, I've been on here before. Stay in the spirit. Uh, mean what I say, do what I say. Always make the next right step and place myself in miracle territory. Mm. Prayer, prayer is the faith part. Works are God blessings. Mm. So I just wanted to share that, man, because many of the things that were talked about throughout this moment, man, uh, it's constant sharpening the blade. And man, I, I thank you, Dave, man. I, I'm I'm grateful that you reached out, bro. Me too. I'm dude. grateful. It, it's it's a lot of cats that do, and and let's be real, 100. They not coming on here, bro, because they 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 they're not bringing value, man. They're not trying to inspire. They care about all the the other craziness, Dave, and oh, their and, PhDs or whatever they got. Yeah, bro. like like that. I don't care what that letters, man, Dave. Dave, bro, you found out you had cancer, dog. You almost died, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and you still here with us. You with yeah. your children. You know, with your family, bro. And you got so much more to give, bro. And you so didn't go internal. Money. You found it, you turned around it, and, and you started getting it in with it. You yeah. didn't stop. And then yeah. it came back for round two, and then you, you, you're you tackling it again. Yeah, like, come on, man. We, 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 they ain't built like you so in a lot of places, bro. It's like, true, bro. It's true, man. And it, it, it's 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 amazing, bro. Like, I'm just grateful, man. It's it's light bulb lessons again, organic, uh, straight from the heart, straight from the soul. Uh, these two brothers, once again, man. Like, you know, I'll, I'll ride with these two cats with any leader that you put on the damn stage. Any leader that you put in front of me, I'll rival these two gentlemen with them. That's a fact. It, we're, we're, proven. That. we're proven. We're proven, man. It's, it's not. It's not about kissing on butt. You know, we got trillions of accolades that's been given to us, man. We're here in this moment because we're trying to help someone else who's yeah. out there right now. I'll, I'll start off first. Seven seven zero. 383-1967. Call that mm -hmm. number. Robbie, Dave, can you please pass your number for anybody out there? Absolutely. 808-388-5066. 808-388-5066 is my personal number. It's been my personal number for years. It's on my business card because my, I'm in the business of helping people. And, and, and you can't do it by, by putting these little boundaries in place. People got to have access. Right. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it, man. Go ahead. Hit me up. Just know that I will turn the phone off at a certain time, but right. it's 718 612-3627. <laughs> I will say I was kidding. I'll never turn my phone off because leaders are always available. Right. hundred percent. Hey, we love you all out there. And as we always love to say, peace. Yeah, yes. man. Peace. <laughs>